Hey everyone, welcome back to TK's Tech Talk. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to install an SSD inside the XPS 13, this is specifically the XPS 13 9305, and more importantly, installing a PCI Express Gen 4 X4 drive, which is in this case the Samsung 980 Pro 2 terabyte, which apparently has a 7,000 megabytes per second read speed. I'm not sure if you guys can see that there. But basically why I'm doing this is because I want to know if this XPS 13 can make maximum use of PCIe Gen 4 or not. I would think it can because it's an 11th gen Intel laptop which su suggests that this SSD should work at more than PCIe 3.0 speeds. So more than 3500 megabytes per second. Truth is I've already done the test, the driver is already in the laptop and it does work. So what actually happened was I recorded this whole video installing the drive into the laptop. I did the benchmark for the video and naturally I only got to 3,800 megabytes per second and that was it. I thought, right, we're done. You know, we're, we've only hit 3,800 megabytes per second and I was going to post that video, but some part of me didn't believe that that was correct. So let me just boot the laptop up while I explain the rest of it. So I, was, so I was convinced that this is not the right result. Um, so what I did, I decided that I'm going to actually see if I can, oh, the laptop's on, but the screen brightness is very low. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you can see the screen there. Let me readjust the camera. Back in a second, let me get it in a way that you can see it. Okay, I've been having a lot of fun trying to get this laptop in the right way, place to make it so that I can record it without too much distortion and there's lots of light coming into the room. I've closed the blinds, kept one open for a little bit of light and the screen is massively re reflective because I've got the touchscreen version of the laptop. So I've got the benchmark software loaded uh, to make life a bit easier and before I do the benchmark I'm just going to show you again. Uh, let's go into device manager, make sure that we do have the correct drive installed so let's go to disk drives and there i'm hoping you can read that it says samsung ssd 980 pro 2 terabyte and if we also go into my computer you can in indeed see that up oh, it's 458 i think that's because i re-imaged it so i just so that you can see that sorry not device manager let's go to right click disk management and we can oh I know what's going to happen. So I've actually re-imaged the drive, so it's done exactly as it was. And if I try and extend this, it won't use that software. We can use a partition tool, whatever. But you can see here, the main point is that it's 1,862 gigabytes. And I'm not going to go into this, but I have another whole video discussing why two terabytes doesn't show as 2,000 megabytes. Sorry, 2,000 gigabytes. That's for another time where you can watch that video. So now that we've seen that, let's do a quick test. So I'm going to do a very quick test. I'm going to use the biggest IO size for the block size and I'm going to use the biggest file size possible. So this on the left hand side is ATTO disk benchmark and I'm going to click start. So while it's doing this benchmark I'm going to tell you an interesting story. So like I said before I recorded this video and then I trashed it and what I realized was and just for some reason I had a feeling that maybe maybe just maybe I have an old version of the software. So I downloaded a new version and once I downloaded the new version, I'm now hitting, I don't know if you can read that, writes of 4.09 gigabytes per second and read of 6,000, well, 6.13 gigabytes per second. So that is clearly over PCIe Gen 3 speeds because we should be topping out at 3,500, 3,800, something like that for the read and about 3,200 for the write. So we're definitely into PCIe Gen 4 territory. It means that the laptop definitely supports a PCIe Gen 4 drive. So let's just do another similar test. Let's just do one iteration of a 64 gig file and let's do run and let's see what that comes up with. Uh, I think the tests were more or less the same but we're getting in excess of 6,000 megabytes per second read and around 4,000 megabytes per second write. So I know it's a bit of an overkill maybe for this laptop to um, to actually use this drive but at least it's future proof. It means in a couple of years time, if you wanted to increase the size of the drive inside your XPS 13, because nothing else is upgradable. The RAM's not upgradable. 
there's no second, second slot for storage, blah, blah, blah. So the only thing you can do is upgrade the SSD. So this is very nice that we can at least upgrade to a PCI Gen 4 X4 SSD and that's clearly visible from this result. So let the write finish. And like I said, I'm doing this video backwards. So I'm now going to, um, so what did we get? We got 6,300 megabytes per second read, 4,333 megabytes per second write, which roughly equates to similar to what we got from the ATT or disk benchmark. So there it is, it definitely works, okay? It definitely supports PCIe Gen 4. And like I said, the one strange thing for me, I had to update both of my benchmarking softwares. I was getting results all over the place, trust me. I was having write speeds of, uh, sorry, read speeds of 200 megabytes per second. And this, just updating the benchmark software gave me the correct results. And I'm very happy. Now, admittedly, I haven't bought this drive for, oh, you can't even see it. I'll open it, turn the lights on again. I bought the Samsung 980 Pro in a prime day sale. Um, let me just shut this down while I explain this. And, and I bought it just in case Sony added support for the PlayStation 5 to uh, allow for the internal SSD to work. And finally enough, I've been out of the country for a while. That's why, you know, I haven't posted a video recently, but I just got this drive very recently because it was out of stock when I ordered it. And it now works in the PlayStation 5. Anyway, I will be testing that at some point, no doubt. So for now, let me set up my camera again and I'm gonna show you how to open the laptop and we're gonna go through how to take, replace the drive. Back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. So got the laptop ready to open. You will need a Torx T5 screwdriver, similar to the one you would have seen in my Precision 5540 comparison uh, video where I talked about the differences between the 3541. So you need to open one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight T5 screws and that's it. Then what you will need to do is use a pry tool or something and I don't have anything fancy like that uh, to go around the edges um, and open up the laptop. So let me just quickly do that and I'll be right back. And I just wanna mention one more thing here before I do that. Well, let me do the unscrewing at the same time. So basically, you guys may have noticed that this laptop is the XPS 13 9305. This laptop was released in 2021. You may or may not have heard of this version of the laptop. And this, you will notice that the keyboard layout is similar to last year's 7390, I think it was. And then obviously the previous generations where they have a slight the smaller keyboard than the new XPS 13 9300 series. So the 9300 from last year and the current 9310, uh, they have like the edge to edge display. They have a 16 by 10 display where this one only has a 16 by nine display. And that's why you still, still can see that logo at the bottom of the screen. So maybe I'll do another, another video to talk about the laptop in particular, but let's just keep this video simple. Let's keep it to the internals of the XPS uh, 13 9305 and I'm sure the 9310 is very similar inside. The only thing that's upgradable is the uh, laptop SSD, the internal M.2 SSD, and obviously you probably will be able to change the battery. So all the screws are off and let me see if I can just pull it off easily for now. You have to go around the edge with the, preferably with the pry tool. You can see it's, it's flexing a bit when I'm doing this. I'm just trying to force it off, but because I've done it once, it's fine. So there we go and it's off. And there's the inside. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it clearly. Let me just zoom in a little bit, maybe try and center this a touch and zoom in. Okay, so the SSD is here. It has a heat sink on the top. There is a thin thermal pad on the top and on the bottom. So we're gonna see that now. And this metal plate obviously is gonna be your heat sink. Um, it's actually different to what I saw in the 5540 where uh, and even the 5530 and the 15 inch precisions that came before that where the thermal pad was attached to the case inside this one does not have a thermal pad for the in, inside the case but it does have a thermal pad for this chipset over here so now we will need a phillips screwdriver to open up one screw on the heat sink and that just pulls out like that i'm keeping the screw in there i think it does come out but just to keep it safe and then you slide out. So that notch there goes into this metal ring here. So I'll just put that down for now. So just to show you on the other side, there is a thermal pad, a very thin thermal pad and I just lost the screw there is. Let's pick that up. 
Okay, so there's a thermal pad here, and then we're going to put this down. And underneath the drive, now the drive is actually sitting down right now, which is strange, but you can see now clearly that it is a 980 Pro 2 terabyte. And if I just flick that up a little bit, and then you have to slide it out, it's not like the PC motherboards where it will just spring up. It's out, okay? That's the back of it in case you wanted to know. And there's the front of it again, in case you wanted to see it. It's a reverse unboxing experience. So then there's the other thermal pad underneath the SSD. So I'm not sure how it will, uh, you know, handle the heat going forward. But now let's unbox the original drive, which I've put inside here. So you know, nothing exciting, of course. What I found interesting was, so here's the original drive, right? I just put it inside the case to keep it safe. And uh, because naturally I'm going to put it back in now. And what's interesting about this drive, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, they're using a Kioxia drive. And I haven't really ever, I haven't heard much about Kioxia. I'm not sure if it's something new. I'm not sure if it's something that's been rebranded, but I haven't even done a speed test, to be honest, <laughs> to see how fast this drive works. I, I was just curious to see if we can use a PCIe Gen 4 drive. So I just opened it up and had a look. Uh, generally this laptop boots uh, very fast and it, it works amazingly. I only recently got it, so I haven't really used it that much. But this is it. This is literally how you chain the SSD. So we just put the metal plate, slide that back into the notch as I explained, and then put one screw back in. And that's it. It's done. You know, now we just need to put the cover back on. So let's make sure this is all lined up properly. And I think there's a couple of clips at the back here. You have to be careful to make sure that they do get clipped in. Uh, around the heat sink area here. So that looks like it's down. So now we can just clip it all back into place. Make sure all the clips are down. Yeah, that looks good. Does it look all right? Yeah, I think it's good. Everything is in line. Yeah. Looks fine. So now we'll just screw it back up. So that really is it for this video. And uh, uh, like I said, I will at some point when I get a chance to update to that beta firmware in my PlayStation 5, I will be putting this drive into the PlayStation 5. So I will try to do a video uh, at the time around that. I mean, there's already, already plenty of uh, great videos out there. And one, one that I've been following closely is uh, NAS Compares uh, because NAS Compares is actually doing a demonstration and formatting every different version or many different brands um, of, of different M.2 PCIe Gen 4 SSDs for the PlayStation 5 and showing us the benchmarks that we're getting after formatting drive inside the PlayStation 5. I'm going way off the point here now, but uh, in case you want to see that, I haven't had time to do that yet. So uh, definitely check out that channel if you want to see the videos. You know, at the end of the day, it's all about trying to share knowledge and tell you what's useful and give you guys value. So I appreciate your time for watching this video. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, please do feel free to ask. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this useful. And I will see you in the next one.